Welcome to the greenhouse everyone. It's a little loud out here. We have a super windy day and it's blowing a road from about a mile away. All of that road noise is blowing this way so I apologize for the excess noise. We've got like 40-50 mile an hour winds. Those winds I just showed in a short video ripped the top off of our shed back there so I'm going to rebuild it better and more sturdy with a sturdier metal sheet on the top as opposed to those clear polycarbonate panels we had. So I'm going to recycle those into some type of solar dryer or something. But with the temperatures being where they're at, we're sitting at a 22 degree high today. We had like 10 to 11 degrees overnight with a uh, 1 degree wind chill or something. So it was absolutely freezing. Everything's alive in here. Our fish are alive. There's no ice. We've had 47, 46 degrees is the lowest we've seen with eight degrees overnight. That is without storing any type of extra energy off of a stove or even burning a stove. So on those very cold nights when we have polar vortexes and stuff like that through the years, I've always shared that I come out and start a stove fire and get it nice and warm in here so we can build up the thermal mass. Now there is many more ways that we could be pulling this thermal mass off of this stove, the stove behind me. You can't really tell I've got so much stuff on top of it here. We've got our oven and I've got a DIY boiler. So I'm in the process of building a boiler. I wanted to bring you guys along for this. After I started to drill holes and put things together, I figured I might as well show you guys everything that I'm doing from beginning to finish, not just a final product throwing hot temperatures. So we're gonna check all of this out and do a DIY build here for a stovetop water heater or a stovetop boiler type system to heat this thermal mass tank. So if that sounds interesting, please consider subscribing to the channel. We've had a lot more subscribers on this channel than we ever thought possible so thank you to you guys this is all possible because of you guys so let's get right into this so it's a completely different situation when you're trying to heat up some air like a furnace does for our house or whether you're trying to heat up water like a boiler or a hot water heater does in your home using all natural gas or LP gas whatever your source is so why is it so different to heat one or the other and that is because of specific heat it takes a minuscule amount of energy to actually raise the temperature of one pound of air. It takes 0.24 BTU, just 0.24, like a quarter of a BTU. It takes one entire BTU to heat one pound of water by one degree Fahrenheit. So heating one pound of air is a lot easier than heating one pound of water, and especially when it's in a flowing system, because you have the surface area, the flow rate, and the temperature, and medium and conductive forces that you've got to take into consideration. When we're heating air, you can just heat up a tube and blow air through it, or just openly heat air, like with a stove like this, just radiate the heat out. So there's a lot of different ways to open and access that energy, those BTUs that can potentially be free out of a system like this. So why I shared that info is because I thought it would be pertinent to today's studies. So we're going to be doing two different videos on this. So we've got this line behind me, and I've ran a piece of metal pipe back there. So we're gonna pull some air temperatures, blow air temperatures out, blow them through our geothermal, and see what kind of temperatures we can get by heating the floor or heating the greenhouse tunnels themselves directly with an inline blower. So that is completely separate, the heating air. Now, what we're going to do today is heating water because I thought that would be much more valuable because it holds so much more energy. Now we're gonna be using sand today, so I've got a five gallon bucket full of just regular sand. It's got a little moisture to it just from being in the greenhouse. So where that sand comes into play, the sand has a much higher temperature rating than water. So the process of heating water up and hitting the boiling point and then it's starting to turn to a vapor is much lower than the process of sand melting or burning, you know? So we're going to be able to put a lot more energy into the sand to transfer it right to the copper tubing. So I'm gonna show everything we're doing. I just wanted to get a little bit of understanding and explain the process here before I just start working. Pretty cool to see these fish being active like in the middle of winter here when it's 20 degrees outside and whipping cold. The ground is frozen solid and we've got fish swimming around in here. Moving on over to the projects we've got on hand today. I showed using our little uh, speed controller, basically a voltage controller. 
So this little guy is going to come into play today. I will try and drop a link to the video where I explained how that works and the setup of it. You can hear that wind just ripping, ripping through the tree behind me and it's blowing the greenhouse around a bit. So we've got our little C-Flow pump here. 12 volt DC, we've got 16 liters per minute, which is right around, uh, what, four gallons or something, a little over four gallons, I'd say. So we're going to use that and this tubing here. This is going to be exiting. This is going inside the drum. We're going to be pumping the water up through and over to our little stove heater. We're gonna get into that. Just wanna share all the pieces and parts that's going to require to hook this up. So this barbed fitting goes right in the end of our tube. And then we've got our copper, our little copper piece that was just sticking out. This was a cut off piece so I could get the right size fittings here. So we've got a little compression fitting on a barb. Uh, that was probably like a $3 part to be able to hook that together. So that will get us from our tubing to a piece of copper. So this is our copper overflow right here. This is going to dump back into the tank. Following that line across, I guess I should show, I've got a little eye hook here a little eyelet that I ran it through so it's not touching wood and it's not just floating around. So I haven't put any sand in here yet. 200 degrees down at the bottom of that because we've got a decent fire going. Nice logs in there. I think my son might have made, yeah. He made two little loaves of bread. He really enjoys cooking off of this uh, greenhouse stove in the greenhouse oven there. So I just wanted to show this process before I got too far. We've just drilled a simple hole in each side. We may have a little bit of sand come out of there. I will just literally throw some tape around the edge of that or use some caulking or something non-toxic here just to plug that up so no sand is leaking out. So the coil was nice and clean and perfect. It's not too bad still. I wanted it uh, at least a couple inches from the center there. And how I did that was just took it and wrapped it around a piece of PVC. I just find a piece of PVC or a metal pipe or anything that is the diameter of what you want to coil it around. And it's very, very simple to achieve it that way. Trying to wrap it around the uh, exhaust pipe here, I don't want to do that. We had failure with that last year because of the fact that it gets so cold outside that the cold temperatures do transfer through. We had a freeze up and it blew out our line, so we broke our copper pipe. It just froze and busted out with ice. So we're gonna protect this in the sand on the stove and it doesn't have to stay. All I have to do is simply take this out and I can remove it, but this will probably be here for the majority of the winter so I can use it on those very cold days. So let's go ahead and get started hooking things up here. So we've got our pump here. I'm gonna go ahead, take our little twist tie off, save that for a repurpose there. So about a yardstick worth of electrical wire. We're going to go ahead and drop that little guy down in there. You should do every time you feed the fish. So, the compost heater just kicked on. We're pushing about 89 degrees out of there. So this looks like a little bit of a cluster right now. We've got everything just kind of hanging out all willy-nilly, but what I've got to do is connect our black tubing to our copper tubing with our barb and compression fitting. So we're going to go ahead and complete this step. So we're gonna go ahead, take ourselves a hose clamp, slide it on, we've got our nut driver. We're gonna take our barb, push it in there, and then tighten her down. So now that we've got the barb attached, I'm gonna go ahead and dump the sand into the system itself so we can start heating that up. So that is just going to require me scooping it and dumping it right into this little bucket. So it's as easy as that. We've got our little compression fitting that slides over the copper and we've got the actual compression fitting itself that does the compressing when we tighten this down. So I'm gonna show this process here of connecting our copper to our rubber hose. So the most important step to this is doing it in the right order. So we're going to go ahead, slide this part of the compression fitting down here, free moving slide our actual little sleeve here. So, now we've got the bead, we've got the compression fitting, 
all ready to go. We've just got to hook it up and connect. So this connection here is kind of ridged to match this little bead here so it makes a nice tight seal there. Push it in tight and we'll just tighten everything up the best we can. So we've made our connection between our system and our tank. So all that's left to do now is let this bad boy heat up. What's it sitting now? Because all that sand was about 50 degrees, 59, 57. So I got a decent hot fire. I'm going to add a little more to this and then we'll be back to turn this on and take some temperatures. So just a few short minutes with a hot fire later, we've got ourselves, that's more, ah. Got two loaves of bread ready here. This little greenhouse oven absolutely kicks butt. I love this little thing, it was about $50 and it's quality. I mean, we've had it in the greenhouse, it's not rusting, it's not decaying. Nice steamy hot bread here, like berry, mixed berry bread or something. Now that is absolutely delicious. We've been cooking off of this thing quite a bit. Just simple baking stuff, little snacks for us when we're out here, but I'm sure we could probably do a whole meal in here and we might try that this winter here. Hey, where's that? So if we're taking 53 degree water, I think that says 53. Yeah, 53.4 degree water from our drum here. That's what temperature this thing has held through the night and it's starting to warm back up from a little bit of sunlight we've got and the hot stove. The hot stove made it start sweating. All that water getting pulled out of the air, so we've made ourselves free water systems just by running colder water up through a coil and then just letting it pull moisture out of the air and drip back into the system like aquaponics. So we really never had to refill those. That was a cool experiment to be able to pull water from the air, just create water for free. So before I give temperatures on the system and we turn it on, I wanted to kind of share what it would cost to build this from scratch or basically just what it cost me, my cost incurred. So I've got $10 invested in this soy drum. It was a soy bean oil drum, so I just rinsed it out and used that for 10 bucks. That was a pretty decent find. That little pump we got was $19.99, so it was like $20. $20, we've got maybe $10 worth of hose, but I've had that hose, so we didn't incur the cost this time on that. And we've got the copper tubing and fittings. The copper would cost 50 feet of that, I think quarter inch copper would be $30 to $40, and that's what we've got is probably like 40 feet in that bucket because we used a little bit to transfer. So uh, the fittings cost us maybe 10 to $15 if everything was brand new and trying to hook everything up, hose clamps, etc. And if you didn't have any sand, you'd have to get that also along with a bucket. So you might be at 80, 90, 100 dollars to create some type of simple boiler system. This cost me about 35 to 40 dollars to accomplish this and set it up and get it going. So let's go ahead and check everything out here. So we've got our little flow rate controller or the motor speed controller. We've hooked all of our systems into it. We got our pump in, wires out, or where the power will come through. We're going to steal our geothermal energy where we can connect right up here. So all of the lines are connected. And this is probably getting pretty warm by now. 77, 75 in the dead center. And then just going all around some of the outside. So I'm just shining it directly down into the sand, not on the metal itself. Closer to the center, it's about 80 degrees. But on the outside here, that sand is going to be very warm, like hundreds of degrees warm where we're close to contact. So as it passively transfers through there, it will heat our water up. We're going to plug these systems in and turn it on. Got our red indicator light. So we've got a very, very small amount of flow that is going to be starting here. Let's set the camera up and check this out. All right, so we have got steaming hot water coming out of there. It's literally steaming. Of 
cool 125 degrees average 140 138 yeah you just see the steam rolling off that thing so that's a hundred percent why I wanted to use this because as I control the flow rate I can basically just get it to where it's just barely flowing barely using energy we're still operating our fan for that we got our fan back behind our greenhouse bricks pushing the hot air out blowing out on the Peltier device fan so with this little device which I need to protect for moisture we can really fine-tune or flow heavily it's very interesting so that is super cool. I can just suck the cold water from the bottom or halfway down and just continually transfer it through this the entire time we've got a fire going in here. So after 10 minutes of continually running like this, it's still putting 100 plus degrees into here and it's just steaming right out. So we're gonna be able to really change the thermal mass and capacity of this 55 gallon drum. Now we're not flowing very much, obviously. I took the 16 liters or four gallons per minute and really greatly reduced it down. It's probably flowing maybe a gallon a minute or less. So it's gonna take quite some time to transfer 55 gallons, but it is just constantly dropping in and all of that heat will slowly soak in and this will be a massive thermal mass for us. That will be a great addition to everything else we've got going as far as heating systems in the greenhouse. So this was quite simple. I mean, I could do this on a huge scale also with a 55 gallon drum, cut the top off, put a whole bunch, like a hundred foot of like half inch copper tubing in there and you could create a darn serious boiler system with that. And I'm not seeing any leaks or breaks or anything. So our little connection did us well there. Just quite interested to continue watching this operate. So maybe 15 minutes after we turned it on, just putting some seriously steamy water in there. Pretty cool little system we just built. It's hard to compete and replace the BTU potential we put off of a wood stove. Now our massive compost heater does keep up with it, but the amount of heat we can get and how quickly we can transfer it and put it in a system like this, I mean, in a couple hours we can raise the temperature of this tank pretty significantly. So if you're interested in this, we are going to share a few more data collection videos, hot weather, cold weather. I want to order myself a thermal imaging camera, but it is expensive. So maybe Santa will bring me that for Christmas. Oh, and if anybody has any questions on all of this, definitely drop in the comments below. So you guys suggested and asked me to build some type of boiler or stovetop heater. I didn't want to route it around the exhaust of the stove. Like I said, it's just too exposed and it's too incorporated in the system. So if there's any questions, you know where to drop them. I want to thank you guys. Still cranking that steamy water out of there. This thing will last as long as we've got a hot fire burning. So quite interesting to see this operate. Like I said, I'm going to have to get some electric paste or something or a little box where I can rig this up to protect our electricals. But other than that, this one's done. Stay tuned for the air heating video where we're gonna take temps and experiment. Now I put this piece on so we could draw a lot of heat through there and run it into our tunnels or down into the ground through geothermal. So stay tuned.